Hare Krishna. So welcome to the Upadesha Amritam class. And uh, Hare Krishna. We will get started. Uh, before we start, let us recite the Mangalacharan prayers. Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Soham Rupa Kadamakyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Utapadakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sakana Raghunatham Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Dev Shri Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaurapani Krachani Nirvishnati Pashtatya Deshatani E Krishna Karuna Sindho Deena Bandho Jagatpate Omesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Saptakanchana Gaurangi Shri Shapano Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpatrubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyayevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityana Shri Advaita Shivas Adi Gaurabhatta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Sri Prabhupada Ki Jai Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai Jagadji Prabhupada Ki Jai Okay, thank you very much so let me share this screen. So we are in our third session of Sri Upadesh Amritam by Sri Rupa Goswami, the English translations and purports by His Divine Grace Abhay Charnarvind, the Bhaktivedanta Swami Sri Prabhupada, which he called as Nectar of Instruction. Upadesh Amrita, Upadesh means instruction. Amrita is nectar. So, Nectar of instruction, or you can say uh, nectarian instructions, or you know, but basically instructions that enhance our bhakti. And most of the material I have taken from Sriman Hari Parshad Prabhuji's classes. He's giving a whole series on in depth, in depth series on Sri Upadesh Amritam. Every verse he's spending eight or nine classes, each verse. So we have done almost like seven, eight months, and we are still on verse five. So uh, all his classes are available on this YouTube channel that you can see. And uh, uh, I mean, there is not, uh, I, you know, um, I'm not qualified to speak about Prabhuji, but he's very, very, very advanced, both in his knowledge and practice. Um, so very fortunate to have his association and learn from him. And he takes commentaries from various acharyas. Of course, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj, Sri Bhakti Vinod Thakur, um, and all the other previous acharyas, Srila Radha Ramana Goswami, etc. So, and he connects the various parts of Vedic uh, Shastras and gives us a nice understanding. Um, here, this is a new picture. He's holding this new book. I just wanted to share Bhakti Rasayanam. This is the Samadhi of Sri Hari Suriji, who has written this monumental work called Bhakti Rasayanam, 
and it is basically a commentary on the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam and only on the Vraj Leela pastimes. So till chapter 49 and then he disappeared from this world, Sri Hari Suriji from 18th century and Lord Sri Krishna gave him personal realizations. He appeared before Sri Hari Suriji and gave him personal realizations of all the Vraj Leela pastimes. And he has written those in his Sanskrit commentary called Bhakti Rasayanam, which is very, very complex and it is in a very encoded way. So to decode them, that's why I have said here, not just translation, but unfolding and translation. To understand each verse, I remember last year when he came here, Hari Parshat Prabhu, we were driving and he was thinking about what is the meaning of one word in the Sanskrit verse and how to understand it. And he asked me, Prabhu, what do you think this word means? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I couldn't. But then, you know, two days later, then he said, ah, I got the meaning. So like that, you know, the, it's a very, very, and it has not been translated yet. So Hari Parshat Prabhuji has translated uh, first part. So this book is there and uh, it contains the first seven chapters of the Srimad Bhagavatam's commentaries. These commentaries contain about 4,000 verses so overall on 44 chapters, oh, 49 chapters of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So uh, I'm personally very, very much looking forward to this book. He will bring it with him when he comes here next month. But it is in Hindi, but still, you know, and we can go through it and understand and read. English version, he said, is coming out. So a little bit about Bhakti Rasayanam. Okay. Uh, before we start, as usual, we will recite the first three verses, which are part of memorization. So of the Bhakti Shastri, but not just Bhakti Shastri. In general, it is very nice to memorize these verses, all of them. So we go in lead follow format. And only the Sanskrit. So one one line, okay, one one pada. Vacho vegam manasaha krodha vegam. Vacho vegam manasaha krodha vegam. Vacho vegam udaro pastha vegam. Etan vegan yo vishaheta dhiraha. Janasanghascha laulyamcha Janasanghascha laulyamcha Janasanghascha laulyamcha Tadbhir bhaktir vinashyati Tadbhir bhaktir vinashyati Utsahan nishchayat dhairyat Utsahan nishchayat dhairyat Tad karma pravartanat Tad karma pravartanat Jagat Sato Vritte Sato Vritte Vir Bhakti Prasidhyati Vir Bhakti Prasidhyati So, um, if possible, please memorize all the 11 verses, not just the three. These are, this is Amrit of Upadesh. And uh, it will be very nice for us to memorize all 11. In times of difficulty, these verses are the ones that will save us. And not just these 11, like this, there are more, like Shashtakam is there by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Some of the important verses of Bhagavad Gita and so many other verses. Those who are doing Bhakti Shastri, they have a whole docket of verses, almost uh, 50 verses that they can memorize. And it's not just for testing your memory, but uh, it is to help us in times of trouble. 
and this material world is going to present us with troubles. So the more we can memorize and use them in times of need, then we can be uh, happy that we have made some good use of the knowledge that we have learned. This knowledge is highly applicative. It's not theoretical. Okay. So now we will resume. So this was, so we are going to start verse number two. Okay, so verse number two is, what is it? Atyaharaha prayashascha prajalpo niyamagraha janasanghascha laulyamcha shadbhir bhakti prasidhyati vinashyati. So this is the don'ts, don't do these. Okay, so the six habits or six vices to be avoided, not adopted. So otherwise, what will happen? the bhakti will be impacted. It will be uh, diminished or hurt, damaged, or ultimately, if you indulge too much in these six, then it could also be destroyed. So that is the meaning of uh, these verses, uh, this verse. And the next six, which we will cover next time, uh, I don't think we'll cover the whole thing today. But... Uh, the next six are the do's. The same kind of last line is there, Shadbhir Bhakti Prasidhyati, which means it Bhakti becomes more and more prominent in our heart. So today we will focus on uh, Vinashyati or the don'ts. So, <clears throat> what is the main... Uh, first, we will quickly discuss the main points of entire verse. So, in first verse, what was the first verse? Sixth uh, urges to be fully controlled. Okay, manas uh, vacho vegam, manasaha vegam, krodha vegam, jivha vegam. Udar Vegam and Upastha Vegam. So these six urges are very difficult to control. One who controls them becomes a dhiraha. What kind of dhiraha? Who is qualified to make disciples? That very, very high level. So the point is that is the end state. That's the end goal. It's like the, you know, where we want to reach. Okay. But they are very difficult. So the next two verses, the do's and don'ts, are for our gradual progress. Okay, so they tell us how to reach that end state, the final state. Okay, so by the way, I'm just, I just want to mention, most of the material that I am speaking today is taken from Hari Parshat Prabhu's classes. This is just a summary. It will be very nice if you can go through the detailed version, which is there on his website, um, channel, YouTube. And especially the best part is the q and A. I mean, it's amazing how he answers the questions with a surgical precision, 100% backed by Shastra. He will quickly open up Shastra and just show it right there. So uh, this, is, this class is not a replacement for that. It is just a, you can say, appetizer or a, you know, sample, sampling. So please go through that is my recommendation. So, uh, these next two verses, Vinashyati and Prasidhyati, are for our gradual progress to reach the end state. Because Bhakti is like a, what is it like a? Lata. Creeper, isn't it? And creeper, what is a creeper? It is very weak, very tender. It is very uh, susceptible or prone to be eaten up by a rabbit or a goat or a, you know, uh, trampled by a mad elephant. All these are given in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, these examples. A goat can, can come and eat the Bhakti Lata. A mad elephant can come and trample over it. 
so we need to protect it especially when the bhakti lata or the creeper of bhakti is in its nascent stage is in its beginning stage so bhakti is quite susceptible to be destroyed or damaged for a new bhakta okay uh, but even an adva- advanced bhaktas bhakti is generally well protected um but still it could damage or set back his bhakti if one indulges in these six items too much or to whatever degree okay that therefore you know like just like a new doctor he is not allowed to go near very serious patients who have very serious infectious disease because he doesn't know how to protect himself only the experienced doctors are allowed or you can take the example of pilots only very experienced pilots are allowed to fly a plane in when the weather conditions are not good or you know sometimes when a big plane has to be landed on a small runway like that so experienced ones are 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 generally better protected than the new ones so this instruction the point that is being made here is that this instruction is not just for new bhaktas even the ones who are who have been practicing bhakti for a while should follow must follow this instruction generally the advanced bhakta follows out of habit uh, and a new bhakta follows by his own conscious effort so conscious effort and i claim myself and you know to be a new you know not advanced so conscious effort is very very important in our bhakti so that is the in general overview of the second verse of shri upadesha amrita okay now we will go into the individual items so what is the first item atyahar right so what is atyahar mean overeating. what is the meaning of so he says overeating atyahar ati ati more than more. This, of what food for maintaining body very nice so like hari parshad prabhu mentions udar vegam has already been mentioned udar is directly referring to the belly so generally in uh, shastra our acharyas don't repeat the same instruction so in this case atyahar means over accumulation so like some of you said like you know over indulgence for the body yes it is for our body not just the belly it could be over indulgence in many other scenarios so atyahar is ati ahar ati means over ahar typically means eating but also over consumption over collection of many things and we can see you know you all we don't i don't need an example of atyahar too much atyahar is there you know there are so many things that i hardly use but i have and uh, you know, there are you know many things that we purchase we get that we don't need or we use once or twice and they are sitting in a brand new condition so for a householder there are different instructions for brahmacharis for sanyasis but this whole series we will just focus on householders because we are all i am at least qualified only to speak to not even qualified to speak to householders what to speak of uh, any senior people so we will just focus on the householders instructions to householders so what is not atyahar is to collect some ahar one has to have otherwise one will die it is the ati which is uh, prohibited by our acharyas so to collect only as much as needed for one's bhajan okay now here again once again i will say bhajan does not mean the traditional meaning of or not the traditional the modern meaning of bhajan that you you know one person is sitting with harmonium and just on a stage and singing bhajan and there is a big audience listening okay or in a studio recording and then release the cds or audio video that is not bhajan bhajan means all the activities of bhakti is called bhajan when lord krishna says in bhagavad gita shraddhavan bhajate yomam so that is bhajan 
Okay, so bhajan means all the activities of bhakti are bhajan. So collect only as much as needed for one's bhajan. Okay, now in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, you all know that Srila Rupa Goswami has given 64 limbs of bhakti. The eighth limb of bhakti is to uh, survive or to maintain your livelihood with only as much as needed. Okay, this is the eighth limb of bhakti. To acquire or possess only that much as is needed for, for one's bhakti. So what I, what I have written over here, collect only as much as needed for one's bhajan is direct statement from Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the eighth limb of bhakti. One interesting point that is pointed out is that neither more, which is obvious, that would be atyahar, but neither less, not even less. Otherwise, it becomes um, niyamagraha, which we will cover later. So, one must have, and I will make this point later, enough for one's favorable execution of bhakti, favorable circumstances in favorable circumstances, okay? So, for example, if you are living in New York City, all right, having a car may be atyahar. It takes more, I have heard from some people, to rent a garage is more than renting an apartment, right? Or something like that. So it is a, you know, people who have a car is considered like, oh, you are very, very rich. Whereas in Oregon, you cannot survive without at least one small car because you cannot even go and get milk and fruits from the store. Otherwise, you have to wait one hour for the bus, then get, get into the bus, then walk 20 minutes. And, oh, it's a problem. Okay. So here, it's not atyahar. So it is relative based on one's circumstance. So it is not, there's not sort of a absolute scale of what is atyahar. It is to favorable execution of one's bhakti so that you are not having to deal with day-to-day -day miseries. Okay, another small point, and this point we will see throughout, and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur makes this point throughout, that excess accumulation of impersonal knowledge, karma kanda, fruitive activities in the Vedas, or anything else averse to bhakti is also considered as atyahara which I'm sure none of the devotees under ISKCON's movement or Srila Prabhupada's family, they generally don't indulge in this direction very much. So that is just one point for sake of completion. Now the question becomes, why not to indulge in Atyahar? What is the reason? So who can think? I mean, you all can think, who can, who can, what are some thoughts? Why not? God has given. So I can buy. Actually, your sickness, sickness also, you will not be able to do day to day business with your body even if you take more, where you become sick. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, Prabhuji. It's like never ending desire once somebody has It deviates and wastes our time towards bhakti. Very nice. It wastes our time. Ananya Mataji? It should be uh, enough for everybody as we will, if we will accumulate more than it, it will be scanty for others. Holding. Yeah. And the, yes, very nice. It increases sensual pleasure also, right? Like our senses will just get involved in... We become conditioned to that such usage. Yes. We become habituated. Very nice points. Yes, but... That is another scota we are using. Hmm. Very nice. Very nice point. Yes, Badri Prabhu, you have your hand raised. Is that? Yes, Prabhu. It's basically, it's as Bhagavad Gita says, it's an unsatiable urge. There is no, there is no, there's no. Not, there's no stopping. There is nothing to say, okay, this is enough, right? It's right. You, you do more and more and more and more. It's like, there's nothing like, Okay, this is good enough for me. Right. We will we will cover all these points. So thank you. Very nice points. So as our acharyas say, there are two primary resources that we have: time and money. And atyahar comes in the way of takes away both. It takes away our time and it takes away our money. 
and we are having a devotional discussion yes we may get sick but that is a intermediate consequence the ultimate consequence is that that sickness like one devotee said we get sick okay what's the problem i can get sick and then after few days i can get well the problem is that these two are very precious resources out of which time is way more precious because it is non renewable time once gone doesn't come back so both of these can be very nicely used for krishna's service okay and it is not that and when i say money when we waste money we will cover this in term another top uh, um, another point we will discuss shortly it's not about over accumulation of money but accumulate little and if you spend it more in things that you don't need then for things that you do need you will have to earn more so the point is to save the money for essential things and then you will have to earn less you don't have to worry about earning more because you wouldn't be wasting it on unneeded things there is this very nice uh, verse in the shastra kshane nashte kuto vidya kshana means small pieces of time small pockets of time if you keep wasting kshane nashte kuto vidya then you don't have any opportunity to gain knowledge all the time is wasted in facebook and twitter kane nashte kuto dhanam so if you keep wasting small small things on small you say oh no problem one new shirt new pant new own oh, fancy looking you know whatever belt or whatever you know in many cases the belt is not even visible or socks items that are not even visible we spend so much so kshane nashte kuto vidya kane nashte kuto dhanam so in our case and both of these can be nicely used for krishna bhakti and uh, like that we can now one question becomes very important point that is made is what about yukta vairagya this is a often misunderstood point that okay we will collect so many things but we are using it in krishna's service so it is okay to over accumulate as long as we are using it in krishna's service that is called yukta vairagya that you are yukta you are engaged but you are detached and how you are detached by using it in krishna's service so that is perfectly valid point there is nothing wrong in that point but we must first understand very nicely what is the meaning of yukta vairagya the proper meaning of yukta vairagya must be understood generally and i am equally guilty for this is is that it is misused okay so we say oh you know when you buy a car use it to go to the temple right so when somebody buys a car how many times what is the percentage of going to temple versus going to movie theater and restaurants and all other sense gratification to the various stores to buy things that we don't need macy's and uh, uh, all these other stores how much we use we say when you buy house uh, use it for krishna conscious uh, gatherings so maybe once in a month sometimes once in six months once in a year we use but every week or every other day we have lot of other kitty parties and this and that oh we are doing yukta vairagya because one time somebody came for car puja at the temple so we told them you know you must use the car for krishna's service or come to the temple never to be seen again only for car puja and then gone so that is all we have to be very careful to understand the meaning of yukta vairagya so <clears throat> yukta vairagya is very nicely described again by shri oh i didn't convert to table okay please ignore that blue box so in bhakti rasamrita sindhu and this will be one of the verses for memorization so yukta vairagya is described as anasak anasaktasya vishayan which means vishaya means all the sense objects anasaktasya anasakta asakti means what is asakti attachment anasakti means 
detachment the opposite of that of that complete detachment or completely unattached to sense objects that is one criteria anasaktasya vishayan yatharham upayunjataha which means that to utilize or to accept only yatha arham means as much as is needed and acharyas say for execution of one's bhakti so for execution of one's bhakti only using as much as is needed for bhakti not more <coughs> okay and the third one is nirbandha krishna sambandhe krishna sambandha means in matters related to krishna nirbandha nirbandha means what bound hmm? nirbandha means unattachment un unbound unlimited so unlimitedly eager who is very eager in matters related to krishna yuktam vairagyam uchyate so that is yukta vairagya so above three conditions what i have labeled as a b and c they they must be met for yukta vairagya to apply in our life so are we living our life as a b and c completely detached from sense objects like maharaj ambarish he was the king of the whole planet but he was completely detached so that would be he did not run away from being the king he continued to be the king but he was so like that you know and i have many other examples then one can use anything and everything in krishna's service then you can use that instead of letting go of it oh i don't want okay that would be called what is the next verse we don't discuss it here anybody knows there is a specific term for the next verse then what is it called if you falsely give up oh i don't want even though your mentality is meeting a b and c you are completely attached to krishna and if something comes you use it for krishna's service but if somebody gives it up oh i have as much as needed for my bhakti but if extra is coming i will not even use it for krishna's service i will just refuse it what is that called falgu vairagya falgu vairagya very nice so that is the next verse of bhakti rasamrit sindhu 256 so that is called false renunciation and we see so many nice examples like shila sanatan goswami you might have heard of this story of the salt merchant you remember salt merchant story so sanatan goswami was doing bhajan and uh, 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 in uh, vrindavan and uh, yamuna river flows there and one salt merchant was taking salt along the river and there was some you know low tide or something so the boat got stuck in the you know in the bed of the river and there was nobody to help and this merchant saw this little light so he went there maybe i'll get some help and he saw sanatan goswami there worshiping his wonderful beautiful deity shri shri radha madan mohan ji so he said can you help me he said i am a very weak old man but i have with me the most powerful man so you ask him he can help you so where is the powerful man he said right here madan mohan ji is there <coughs> so that salt merchant prayed to madan mohan ji the high tide came from low tide his boat sailed when he came back and then he promised whatever profit i make i will bring it back so he brought back the profit to sanatan goswami sanatan goswami didn't say i don't need it he didn't say he says sure please uh, give the money and he constructed the first temple in vrindavan first temple was madan mohan ji temple and the tallest it continues to be the tallest temple till today okay so that is the yukta vairagya so you have to be till that level of anasaktasya vishayan and yatharham upayunjataha only as much as needed for your personal you don't put it in your personal pocket that is the point use it for krishna not in your personal pocket okay not like whatever extra i get 90% goes in my personal pocket 10% goes to krishna only in your personal pocket only that much goes that is needed for bhakti everything extra goes to krishna everything extra that is very very high standard but that is the meaning of yukta vairagya so let us the only point being made is let us not confuse 
over accumulation and call it yukta vairagya okay then that is a uh, we are being uh, we are misusing the meaning of yukta vairagya okay at least don't call it that say yes i am doing sense gratification and i am making progress i am not advanced i am beginner i am trying to make progress but don't justify it i am doing yukta vairagya prabhu i am doing yukta vairagya that should not be the point okay it takes time to reach there but we should understand yukta vairagya and not misuse that is the only point being made yes prabhu unbounded and bounded matters in related to krishna what does it mean unbounded matters or bounded? very very interested nirbandha <coughs> means not no limits complete mind is on krishna on nothing else unbounded nirbandha no limits okay that is my understanding then there are some other examples i will just show all of this gopal bhatta goswami he got lot of money and he didn't have a deity he only had shaligram shila overnight the shaligram shila manifested as radharaman ji deity and then he started some very very wonderful worship till today the worship of radharaman ji temple in vrindavan is considered the most uh, you know um, opulent and uh, very nicely done till today then oh there is a spelling mistake raghunath das goswami he got lot of money somebody donated they are all goswami is very renunciate so people come and donate and he used that money to expand radha kund and sham kund so that more and more people can come and take bath and you know uh, relish the nectar of radha kund and sham kund and then our wonderful shila prabhupad he never kept anything in his pocket anything and but he used every penny he got every penny he got he used to spread krishna consciousness all over the world so that is true yukta vairagya we should try to go there we should acknowledge that we are not there yet but not misuse it at least so that is a misused often misused term so that was first point okay atyahara what is next atyahara prayasascha so another prayas so this lecture on prayas by hari parshad prabhu is amazing it is like a must listen among all of them are must listen uh, prayas definitely it's one of uh, my favorite ones another one which is my favorite is manasah vegam in the vacho vegam manasah vegam excellent one lot of like mind boggling i'm just letting you know what all i like among the points prayas prayas means over endeavor prayas means endeavor but the ati applies to prayas as well okay so ati applies to prayas as well some prayas is needed but not ati prayas so there is a nice discussion on prayas so i'm just summarizing quickly on these points again only as much prayas prayas means endeavor as needed for one's execution of bhakti in favorable circumstances okay so same thing like if you are living in oregon you do need a car otherwise it's not like oh why car is a you know you shouldn't have like mental block car is a luxury no if you are spending all the time waiting for a bus you could be instead using that time to read shrimad bhagavatam better to buy a car get the grocery save the time and execute bhakti favorably rather than claiming i don't have a car and i am a great uh, renunciate and spending all the time you know in the rain pacific northwest rain and in the bus so that is the uh, aspect of favorable circumstances one should keep one circumstances favorable enough for execution of bhakti another quick point bhakshila bhakti siddhanta saraswati maharaj mentions that <clears throat> over endeavor to research analyze deeply study the vedas for fruitive pious results impersonal knowledge etc is also prayas which should be avoided so none of us are doing or many of us may not be doing that so that is one point so like prabhu ji mentioned uh, ramakant prabhu the ideal way to live in the material world is by the ishavashya principle what is the ishavashya principle let us recite together 
very nice so what it means is that only what is our quota no more and even the quota one utilizes considering that one is only a caretaker not a master <laughs> Ultimately, even our quota is not belonging to us. It is only given to us to use or utilize. But Krishna is the owner and controller. Isha, Vashyam, Idam, Sarvam. Everything that is there in this animate or inanimate in this material world is owned and controlled by the Isha or Supreme Lord Krishna. Okay, so that is the ideal way to live. And that is not... Ati prayas. That would be not ati prayas. So if you are living by the Ishavashya principle, and we have had long discussions on it in our Ishopanishad classes, that is not ati prayas. So prayas is a very important aspect. What is prayas again? Over endeavor. So how many of you have some kind of undergraduate degree? Hmm? How did you pass? Just, you didn't study for the exams, you just kept playing and then you just went and excelled in all the exams. Is that how you passed? Did you put endeavor? Did you spend some night outs? We call night outs. Yes. Yes. Everyone has to do. Everyone has to do. So, a lot of hard work is needed. So, what we have done, so there is a caution. Caution is that we have developed over long time of existence in this material world. Okay. Even animals, you know, they have to endeavor to, you know, you might have seen, you know, how far a tiger has to run to catch. Sometimes, you know, he cannot catch the deer outruns the tiger and then he is hungry. So is our swabhava that we have acquired over many, many lifetimes. And we have made it into a winning formula that, aha, if you really want to get something, work hard, isn't it? There's the saying, right? Work hard and play hard, right? In corporate circles. So working hard is many people's winning formula, isn't it? Isn't it right? Hmm? When things don't go well, what is that? When the going gets tough, the tough get going. All those the things. The tough get going. Yes. <laughs> So all these things are there, you know, be tough, be hardworking, uh, work hard, play hard. All these things are ingrained into our DNA. But all it gives is temporary success that we understand, correct? And why do we come to Krishna Bhakti? To slow down, simplify our life from this rat race of the material world, correct? That's why we come into bhakti. And so that we can focus on what is really what really matters, which is our spiritual life. We realize somehow or the other that there is more than this just one life where the end goal is eat, drink, and be merry. And there is more to life than that. So we come to Krishna bhakti. But for many of us, this prayas also spills into bhakti also. Because we are bringing in our swabhava. Oh, we must do this. We must do this. And, you know, uh, oh, you know, five-year goal, 10-year goal. Those are good things. But, so please, this is a very, very, I'm trying to walk a very fine line here. Okay. We get into too many side projects. And I have said in the very next line, side projects are perfectly fine. Okay. So too many side projects, but the problem is that we forget our main purpose, which is Krishna Bhajan. Due to our innate swabhav, our innate nature, these projects, because we are all project-oriented people, many of us, the mode of passion. Okay, we know how to succeed in anything and it spills in and that is exactly what we came here to avoid. We were already in a rat race, now we are just in a slightly different kind of rat race. 
And with the, again, we say, oh, it is for Krishna. So we will touch that point as well. Okay. So we forget our main purpose, which is Krishna Bhajan. So what is Krishna Bhajan? Isn't this Krishna Bhajan? We will address that point. Very uh, directly, we will address. So side projects are perfectly fine as long as, as long as, please pay careful attention, our daily direct personal bhajan is not being impacted or diluted. That's very important. Acharyas have mentioned that our direct personal bhajan is our uttama bhakti. That is our main purpose. Do that. And it's not that you have to do that 24 by 7. Okay. Your swabhava may be a project oriented swabhava. But we are here to change our subhava from passion to goodness, isn't it? Doesn't that what Bhagavad Gita teach? Come to mode of goodness and then become guna atita, transcend the modes completely. Isn't that what Bhagavad Gita teaches us? So yes, we are being asked to change our subhava. Definitely, it is better for our bhakti. Mode of goodness is better than mode of passion. Mode of passion is better than mode of ignorance. And guna atita, transcending the modes, is even better than mode of goodness. So it is the direct personal bhajan which will take us to guna atita stage. In the fastest and best way. That is why it is called uttama bhakti. So as long as, so it's not 24 by 7, but Srila Prabhupada in our society has stipulated certain things like you do 16 rounds of Japa for the serious devotees. He has stipulated that. Okay. Not one round, not zero rounds, but 16. And he has not even said 64. That would take the whole day. So 16 is a reasonable number he has come up with. And many other things said daily, you should read one hour Bhagavatam. Three hours, one hour Bhagavatam, two hours of Japa and whatever else. Some Time, it's not still 24 hours. 24 hours is a long time in the day. Eight hours sleep, eight hour work. That still leaves eight hours. And within that, you can dedicate three hours, four hours for Krishna Bhajan. Yes, you will have to take time out from Facebook, Twitter, basketball, cricket. All those things have to be cut out. So as long as, okay. So this is a very, very important point. So how to know the fine line between prayas and ati prayas? The fine line is very simple. When we get lesser and lesser time for our direct personal bhajan. This is very important. Direct personal bhajan. Okay. Which is chanting, reading, smarana. That is direct. Where Krishna is directly in our activity. Okay. Other things are not counted as direct personal bhajan. If you are, let us say, I don't know, going and uh, uh, organizing a uh, some, what may be an example, I don't know, some fundraising uh, through some um, Red Cross or whatever, and then you take the money from there, whatever fund you got and bring to the temple or something like that. In that time when you are spending in Red Cross or whatever chap planting trees or this or that, that is not direct personal bhajan. So direct personal bhajan is Nav Vidha Bhakti or what is shortened as Navdha Bhakti. And that is known as Swarupa Siddha Bhakti. That is direct bhakti. The other aspects are also bhakti. It's not that they are not bhakti. Definitely they are bhakti. They are known as Aropa Siddha Bhakti or indirect processes of bhakti. So the only point being made is not, I'm not, Acharyas are not saying that one should stop Aropa Siddha Bhakti or these indirect ways, but not at the cost of diluted Swarup Siddha Bhakti. That should be there. A fixed consistent amount. Then you do other things. Definitely that is fine. So the point is, this is compulsory. This is not negotiable. It cannot be replaced. So now we come to the main point, which is at least for me and for many devotees, it's a very important point about earning lots of money. 
prayas means ultimately it is for money you cannot earn time time is given free two resources we discussed money and time everybody gets free time every morning you get up you get 24 hours how you choose how to spend it it's your choice free of cost you get every day 24 hours to spend it so it is about the money with between those two resources so you can earn money so we must understand what is the meaning of swarup siddha bhakti or direct personal bhajan so it has been mentioned so many times there are four instances where acharyas and the lord himself has mentioned various processes for executing uttama bhakti this is swarup siddha bhakti topmost bhakti is uttama bhakti everything else is secondary form of bhakti hmm? i don't know i didn't do anything but i am moving the slides that counts as touching some okay we we'll hope it stays okay so there are so many ways or so many not ways but processes of executing uttama bhakti have been specified by the lord and his wonderful disciples or uh, acharyas rupa goswami describes two processes so we have 2 5 9 64 and many more 2 anya abhilashita shunyam which means give up everything else and Krishna Anushilanam, only what is favorable for Krishna Bhakti. So two things, avoid what is unfavorable for Krishna, adopt what is favorable for Krishna. So two, five processes are given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What are the five processes? Hmm? Come on, one, Sadhu Sangha. Bhajana Kriya. Bhajana Kriya. Then, Bhagavata Shravana, Mathuravas, and Shraddhera Shri Murthira uh, Sevana. Okay. Worshipping the deity with a lot of love and devotion. So, worshipping the deity, Mathuravas, staying in a holy place, Bhagavata Shravana, uh, Nama Kirtana, and Sadhu Sangha. So these are the five given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Prahlad Maharaj gives nine processes. What are the nine processes? Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Smaranam, Vandanam, Archanam, Pada Sevanam, Sakyam, Dasyam, and Atma Nivedanam. Nine processes. And Sri Rupa Goswami gives 64 processes. So you all know all these things. I don't remember all the 64. One day I will. But they, I, you know, there are 64. You can always look it up in the book. Now comes the other point. It is not only so you know all what is included. Even in technology and modern material world and everything, all the you know, people who are very smart will tell you it's not only important to, to know what's in the list. Now there is not any, any other list because the other list will be very long what all is excluded. It's everything else that is excluded. So you cannot come up with a list of that. But you must also realize in your mind what is not in the list. Things that are important to you in whatever way, and you see whether it's in the list or not. If it's not in the list, you must be aware of that. So it's very important to be aware of what's not in the list as well. Not just of what is in the list, because that will be the one that will actually remove your confusion when you are presented with something you always must ask the question, is it in my list or not? Okay. You can always go looking out for things which are in the list. That is when you go looking out. But when you are presented with something, how do you know that you should accept it or not? So it is very important to know what's not in the list. And earning money is not included in any of these is not included in any of these and moreover money is not even required to execute any of these any of these with zero money you can execute all these 64 processes nine processes five processes two processes now you can ask okay i need to at least buy bhagavatam okay fine little money may be needed to buy the bhagavatam <clears throat> to buy the 
iPhone or some smartphone to look it up on Vedabase, but you understand, you get the point, okay? In Archanam, you don't have to do Archana or uh, like it is done in Tirupati temple with gold and silver. You can do Archana with Pushpam Patram Pushpam Phalam Toyam, okay? So all that is free. Patram Pushpam Phalam Toyam is completely free of cost. Go into a jungle and uh, you can find all of those things for free. So money is not required for any of these. So, yes, earning some money is okay. Again, it's not like you should not earn any money. One should earn some money for favorable execution of our bhakti, yes. But it is not our main service. That is the main point. Many people have this kind of a mentality that earning money, this one, third point, is my service to Krishna. So it is okay for me to not do my japa or not read Bhagavatam. My job is earning money. I'm giving so much donation to temple. That's what I will do. That's my seva. Then one should understand that is not uttama bhakti. That is definitely bhakti, but that is not uttama bhakti. So one must do that. And why is it not in the list? It's very, very important to understand why it is not in the list. Okay. One can do so much good by donating money, isn't it? Money, if properly used for Krishna, can be put to such nice use. We saw so many examples of our wonderful Goswamis who used the money. But we are not the Goswami. So that I'm going sort of in reverse order. In exceptional cases, a perfected soul like Srila Prabhupada, Sanatan Goswami and all the other examples we discussed, Gopal Bhatta Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, they may be able to earn maybe or use whatever money they get without any impact to their consciousness. Okay, that is possible. But the point is that in Kali Yuga, especially earning money requires unfavorable actions in unfavorable circumstances, usually. Isn't it true? And our Goswamis didn't even go out and earn. They were just given because of their purity. They, people came and donated. But would, would we all agree that it requires us to do this Ati Prayas is not easy. We have to indulge in all kind of unfavorable situations, unfavorable actions. And it's not like you have to open a butcher shop. That's not what is being said. But even normally things that lead to this Ugra Karma, all that comes in the category of Ugra Karma, which almost always lead to contamination of consciousness. <sighs> in a company, you have to lay off some people. If you are manager, oh my God, such a hard thing. You know, no manager ever wants to be the one to have to convey a message. My dear friend, you have to, you know, leave the company. Such so many unfavorable things people have to do or, you know, so many other unfavorable things you have to overlook. Maybe, you know, some wrong thing is happening. You have to turn the eye the other side or you have to shout at people or, you know, you have to do so many other things. You know, so butcher shop is not the only example. Of course, that is very direct, but there are in every situation in Kali Yuga, you have to, you know, you have some people you know, in Los Angeles, New York, have to travel two hours, drive the car, not even in a subway where you can do your japa, but you have to drive the car. What can you do? Maybe you can listen to lecture. That's good, but you cannot do your japa. You cannot read Bhagavad, you know. So many unfavorable circumstances are there to go out and earn money. And all that leads to degrading of our consciousness. So that is the problem when we engage in money. One second. So, and this is not coming from me or from Hari Parshat Prabhu or from anybody else. It is coming directly from Shastra. Shastra has, and again, both these verses quoted by him or kind of, you know, excavated from the depths of the Shastra by Hari Parshat Prabhu and told, and I'm just repeating here. So in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, this is very, very nice verse is there. Dhana Shishya Adibhir Dwarair. Ya bhaktir upapadyate viduratvad uttamata hanya tasyash chana angata. 
so what is the meaning dhana shishya adi so too many disciples so we are not going to talk about disciples here but dhana money too much money adi etc dwarair or the bhakti that comes through this door of too much money ya bhaktir that bhakti upapadyate and you will see here tasyas na cha na angata that bhakti coming out of these doors <coughs> is not uttama bhakti because viduratvad uttamata hanya that that bhakti becomes degraded because we have to engage in all kinds of activities to get that money and then use it for bhakti that is the reason earning money rupa goswami says is not part of the 64 limbs and um obviously bhakti rasamrita sindhu has been written for us in kaliyuga so the translation is acts that are proclaimed to be bhakti by making use of wealth followers etc are actually far away from uttama bhakti because this verse is coming right after the 64 limbs of uttama bhakti so na cha na angata it's not one of the anga so it is obviously referring to the first the previous verses where the 64 limbs have been described of uttama bhakti so it is not one of the anga it's not one of the limbs of uttama bhakti in fact such acts harm the spirit of uttama bhakti therefore such acts can never be considered to be limbs of uttama bhakti in the shrimad bhagavatam there is a beautiful verse arthasya sadhane siddhe utkarshe rakshane vyaye nash upabhog ayasas trashas chinta bhramo niram so in the earning arthasya of money artha okay so everything is of wealth so there are so many things earning sadhane siddhe attainment utkarshe in the increase rakshane in the protection vyaye in the expense loss nash and upabhog enjoyment even in the enjoyment of wealth all the nirnam all men experience what trashas chinta and bhrama labor fear and anxiety so money wherever it enters it brings with it fear anxiety and hard work even in spending the money even in enjoying the money have you heard of this term called buyer's remorse hmm? so that is you spend the money but you are remorseful it's not buyer's happiness but buyer's remorse you feel like you have been cheated so it's even spending money is not very joyful activity in many cases what to speak of earning money protecting money every day you have to go look at your you know this one literally it happened you know the bank account uh, one day you know i had uh, 2000 dollars in my saving account there was an attempted transaction of 3000 dollars and it got declined for insufficient funds it happened in my bank account so i was very thankful only 2000 dollars were there in that account had there been more than 3000 it would have succeeded and i went to the bank and asked them where is this what is this transaction and they they had no explanation and had it been had by chance i had 3000 dollars in my account at that time i would have lost those 3000 dollars luckily i was saved because the whatever the attempted transaction was more than what was present so you have to protect your money every time you have to check your account are there any fraud, fraudulent transactions in my account or if the bank would exist in any universe yeah <laughs> that day also whether the bank itself exists you have to check is the app still there or is the app stopped working <laughs> with all the bank crashes <laughs> isn't it yeah <laughs> so all that comes with great um, problems too many problems in so again the bottom line so again not to say that all of you should tomorrow resign from your jobs or anything <laughs> or give up and you know one person was actually making this point that in our society is gone we have to you know wait so long and so much time we have to wait to build temples to build one povp temple we have to wait for 20 years or whatever donations fundraising so much 
and other temples like the Swami Narayan temple or maybe other places, they raise money like this, crores and crores. And one point was being made in ISKCON, we put too much focus on renunciation or only as much as needed and this and that. Had we not had these concepts, we would be building, uh, you know, mega temples like, you know, left and right. So is it a good thing or bad thing? So obviously it's a good thing. Everybody knows that best devotees are being cultivated within ISKCON. The preservation of the core principles. Now, of course, there is, you know, Maya's influence. There is, there are bad apples everywhere. So, it, you know, I'm not saying that, but it is one of the best places where devotees are really focused. A maximum percentage is focused, rooted in Shastra. Because of Srila Prabhupada's focus on Shastra. So, yes, so it's a good thing. It's fine if we don't have 10 or 20 mega multi-billion dollar temples in the world. We don't even have one. We may have one soon or we will have one soon, but that is enough. We don't need many. What we need is millions of devotees, not, I heard this nice example uh, one time, long back I went to Seattle before the new temple was built. And I met Harivlas Prabhu for the first time. And uh, even then the altar had so many deities. And then he mentioned, so I was asking, uh, generally he was, later on he was mentioning, and of course he has grown the congregation so wonderfully over there. But one of the nice statements which has stuck in my mind is there were more deities than devotees. <laughs> so more deities, but the devotees were not there. But because of our, uh, uh, you know, focus on the, essentials on the basics so many nice devotees are there being cultivated and that is the main that is our pride that is our claim to credit not the empty temples where there are more deities and no devotees all these big big set g uh, can write big big checks and give uh, but they'll never visit themselves or anything like that so it's better to have more devotees than more temples so the key learnings key learning is not that you should leave all earning say no to prayas or ati prayas don't say yes to each and every opportunity for some benefit learn to say no keep and learn to keep lead and keep a simple life that is don't forget your basics that is the main point what you came into krishna consciousness for to quit the rat race of material life and focus on what actually matters, which is our personal bhajan. This should not become another avenue for mega projects. And keep, keep a good amount of time aside daily for high quality, direct personal Krishna bhajan. As long as that is happening, then one can go and do other things and spread Krishna consciousness. All right. So was there a question? I may include the question open-ended so should I what we wait for later? I no, go know. ahead. So like, uh, so I understand this idea about like over-endeavoring or accumulating too much money, but maybe one can like sometimes if people like there's some brahmacharis or someone who are doing Krishna consciousness 100% of the time daily, but then you may see after a lot of them after wherever some of them obviously will do that for the rest of their life and many after two three years will then end up having to like work 12 13 hours a day to maintain maintain their life because they in their early like times were doing like full-time krishna consciousness whereas one could in theory argue that if one earns a lot of money or works focuses when they're young when they're like have the energy to earn a lot of money in some concentrated way then one can like later have some like easy job where they're having stable and then spending six, seven hours a day reading or whatever. Obviously, if you're getting that grind, grind of earning money, then you become too attached to it. But maybe like if we take one extreme of you don't work on that at all, then we can see that afterwards, then you have to then spend your whole time just working some job to barely. Very nice question. Did, did you get here Gopal's question on the Zoom? Yes. No, no. sir. No. 
so the question was <coughs> that we have seen uh, or we see uh, know of some scenarios where brahmacharis who are full time brahmacharis from beginnings you know young age they are fully engaged in krishna consciousness live in the temple like an ashram and you know go on book distribution hari naam sankirtan all these things which are direct uh, activities of krishna or personal bhajan but then later on when they grow old you know they don't have any support or and then they have to you know go from door to door uh, without any support and what you know what's the right understanding so very nice question is that this good summary of the question yeah more or less yeah. yeah so very nice question and very very pertinent question and that is and i will answer it in two ways okay first is that is exactly why varnashram system has been set up that there is brahmachari brahmacharya age and then there is grihastha age so what is the purpose of varnashram especially the grihastha we said this whole series we are focusing on grihastha what is the purpose of grihastha ashram Hmm? accumulate wealth and distribute it to other three sections okay very nice the last part i was getting afraid you said accumulate wealth and then i was saying <laughs> <laughs> but you added the second part which is nice so for entire varnashram system and grihastha ashram the purpose is not accumulation of wealth or to have a family husband to have wife wife to have husband and have children and have a griha the purpose is krishna bhajan even in varnashram but at varying degrees okay so one should go into grihastha ashram for exactly the same reason like you mentioned so you keep something take the example of shri rupa goswami and sanatan goswami yeah. they were big big ministers in the ministry of nawab husain shah they earned so much money finally at the end how much did they keep for their personal emergency 0% 25% they kept for personal emergency they distributed definitely they distributed the rest but they did keep some for their personal emergencies and how did they earn that by having a job under the nawab correct so one may say that of course they are perfected souls nitya siddha they are not uh, um uh, you know uh, jeevas like us who became perfected but they are showing by their example so one should do that okay and accumulate but during the grihastha ashram not completely forget not work like a dog and completely forget because then there is no guarantee that when you go into vanaprastha stage then you will have any chance of uh, reigniting your krishna consciousness or, exiting there, exiting there. or even you know yeah and then you will get so conditioned that taste will become so strong of your earning that it will keep going on till the moment you die so it should be there you save some for the rainy day and then after a certain time you quit and you do full full or increase your bhajan time but during grihastha ashram also one must put significant amount of high quality daily bhajan time that is not an option it is compulsory so does that answer your question yeah so basically what you're saying is that in this stage when you can earn a lot of money as long as you are putting the consistent bhajan and sadhana that's what we said as long as there was this but 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 but, but at the same time then you will still be spending maybe like significant majority of your time just grinding some like money making thing okay or... but you must be clear in your consciousness and then at that point one must have a guru who can guide on what is the right amount right temperature okay you shouldn't overheat the pot and you shouldn't leave it too cool either and that is a very personal advice that one can get okay one knows that yes if i have disease i need to take uh, tablets but the exact prescription dosage and all you get from doctor okay so you go to a guru and then he can tell you the right temperature depending on the situation but yes uh, you work hard but not at the cost of a diluted low quality personal bhajan and in kaliyuga our acharyas don't say you have to do 24/7 but yes few hours every day can be afforded and one should realize what need to be given up is not your job or your uh, mandatory activities like if you have a child 
do helping them in their homework or you know giving them good shiksha is not uh, optional either but many other things that we do are optional like uh, facebook and everything else in that category time wasting categories so once you cut that out definitely there can be time for and then if you are doing some job which requires 16 hour job then one should look to change it you don't need to earn that much okay so one can look for a easier job so all these are the points does that and another point the i said i'll mention two points so my most recent favorite verse is complete when there is complete dependence on krishna then nothing else matters but then that should be there and the verse uh, which inspires me a lot is alabdhe va vinashte va bhaksha achhadana sadhane aviklava matir bhutva harim eva dhiya smarit this is from bhakti rasamrita sindhu uh, 1.2.114 one means eastern uh, ocean two means the second wave which is sadhan bhakti and 114th verse in that what it means is alabdhe va vinashte va bhaksha achhadana sadhane bhaksha achhadana bhaksha means to eat achhadan means to cover yourself with clothes so items of eating clothing roti kapda makan we say these essential items alabdheva means you don't get it a labdhe labh means to get a labdhe means you didn't get it or vinashte you got it and somebody took it away it got destroyed so your basic activity or your basic needs of livelihood got destroyed or you didn't get it a shuddha bhakta how does he operate he operates aviklava matir bhutva one pointed attention on what harim eva dhiya smarit one with one pointed attention one is doing smaran of hari that is all that matters hari is maintaining thousand uh, trillions of living beings he will maintain me also so like that you know yes if a brahmachari is doing full kirtan he may not uh, be you know having the best circumstances materially later on but krishna will having that faith that krishna will maintain and protect he is the maintainer goptritve varanam tatha and he will protect rakshishati iti vishwaso having this strong vishwas that he will protect so then bhagavad gita ಚಿಂತೆ otherwise varnashram system need to be followed to this extent all right so does that hopefully that answers okay so last topic for today is prajalpa very important topic so once again oh yes your question tell me this is actually based on hmm so I think in the purport there's an analogy that Shiva Prabhupada gives about if a human comes across a rice bag of rice mm. versus if other living entities will just take it as much as they need in that moment and then leave. Correct. Naturally speaking or generally speaking you would think that taking a whole bag of rice is a good sense of foresight because it's like you're saving for the future you you know it basically means that you don't have to worry about it later on. So in that way in that sense you are able to spend more time on bhakti because you don't have to worry about your Hmm. 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 so is that still okay because i mean obviously prabhupada gives it as an example of a tihar but i guess i'm just confused about why that isn't just a good idea as it goes okay is that question tulsi asked uh, on um, uh, heard on the zoom or should i summarize not at all not at all okay so not it, all. in the purport like, that the over integral to have early retirement in god 
Okay, so I will address those two points. So let me address first Tulsi. They're two different things. So in the purport of this verse, NOI number two, Srila Prabhupada gives the example of a bag of rice. If a bag of rice is lying on the street, very important to note, he hasn't earned it. It's lying on the street. Animal will come, bird will come, will eat three grains, whatever, whatever it needs to fill its belly that day and will leave. Even an animal, big animal, even if an elephant comes, he will eat whatever is needed. He won't, even though he can carry the whole bag away, he won't. But a human being will not only take two cups of rice, what is needed for that day, he will take the whole bag away. So there is the point being made, it's an analogy. So we must understand the point being made, not sort of go into the hair splitting of the various details. The point being made is, first of all, he has not earned it. Okay, and that too, not earned it by any kind of, uh, you know, we can have a, there's a much longer discussion of what is our quota. In Ishopanishad, we have this thing about our quota. So how much is our quota? So again, you know, too much hard work, et cetera, where you even go to the extent of depriving others. There's this whole modern debate about minimum wage and everything. What is minimum wage? Managers are earning thousands of dollars and the poor worker uh, is not even getting minimum wage. So how much wealth sharing, wealth sharing among the society is a big social topic, isn't it? And so much debate is there and, you know, capitalism versus communism is a big thing. Cap communism means you distribute wealth equally. Capitalism is all about, you know, uh, meritocracy based, whoever, you know, by legal means, you can't like shoot somebody and take his money, but everything else is fair game the big debate so this example is not talking about that it is lying free it's there and you go and take it away from others what was meant for others quota so it's not really like a bag of rice but the example to be or the understanding to be obtained here is that you are encroaching on other people's quota or other people's property the bag of rice was meant for many people to enjoy so like all these things like deforestation is an issue. All this, you can go into whole thing about climate change and this and that for our personal sense gratification, we are destroying the resources, not only from the animals and fish, all these fisheries and dams and all that thing we talk about, not only from them, but from our own future generations. We are destroying and simply for our sense gratification. It's not for our future, this one. If you, if you care for your future, work reasonably hard, earn it properly, and accumulate to a certain Shastric extent. That is Varnashram. But you don't take something which was lying around, meant for others. The bag of rice, the example here is it was meant for all living beings. The man comes and takes it away. So you are clearly encroaching on other people's quota. So that is the point to be made. It's not about, oh, I shouldn't uh, save for the rainy day or, you know, do some earning. So I hope that answers your question also. And it was very similar to Gopal's question. Yes, sir, I think I will All right. Abhimanyu Prabhu, you have a question? Prabhuji, it's me, Anjana. Yes, Mataji. Prabhuji, I was kind of like contemplating Damodar Leela and was trying to understand the concept of endeavor with over endeavor. I mean, because we just mentioned that over endeavor is not good. But in the Amodha Leela pastime, it was like you keep try, try, try until you succeed. For bhakti. So how do we... For bhakti. For bhakti. That's what I was thinking that it's like if it's in Krishna consciousness, it's okay. Yeah, Otherwise... Absolutely. Absolutely. This is for material sense gratification. So that's why the whole discussion is about money and not for um, bhakti. There, Mother Yashoda was over endeavoring, you can say, but for what was she over endeavoring for? To obtain Krishna, to tie Krishna so that he never runs away. He is always within her heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So. Final point for today, we just cover this and 
end or maybe we should just cover it next time what you all think yeah it's better yeah it's uh uh yeah there are a lot of important points here prajalpa so i don't want to rush through it and actually there are some questions on the chat let me cover those eating too much makes sadhana okay so that's a comment yeah that's a valid comment sadhan difficult we should eat for survival we should not live for eating yeah that's true so these are all comments which are uh, questions i'm seeing when we integrate krishna as family in everything that is direct personal bhajan question mark in everything that is direct personal so just integrating krishna in everything so that's what we said it may not be if you are doing some ugra karma and saying oh this i am doing for krishna so i think it's a way little vague the way it is framed i think i and this was probably asked before we went over the slides but direct personal high quality bhajan is those either navadha bhakti or the five limbs or the 64 limbs those those are direct bhakti so integrate krishna in everything is little vague okay nobody can give up their swabhava that is true well that's not true swabhava can be changed that's the whole point of our sadhan bhakti our vaidhi sadhan bhakti is to change our swabhava so anyway nobody can give up their swabhava although one may acquire qualities but we can integrate our friend krishna into everything so his association is there and we are considering serving him okay as long my point is still the same as long as we are doing direct i think we spent lot of time on what is direct krishna bhajan we should continue to do that i think that point is clear then there is question about posting the slides i will do it at the end of the class before the test like i did for ishopanishad these are all work in progress like you saw one of the slides i said make table i forgot to do that is it better to be like dhruv maharaj before beginning any ashram find krishna then any ashram can be lived no 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 that is uh, at the time of swayam bhuva manu in you know a different age different time that is not recommended for kali yuga or dhruva maharaj like at 5 years i don't know how you would go and be like dhruva maharaj and try to find krishna at such a young age then any ashram can be lived that is true without finding krishna all ashrams will give only misery that is true that all ashrams give misery but the purpose of varna ashram is to focus on krishna consciousness within the given ashram so yes there is misery one has to understand being in the material world itself is a mis- misery what to speak of any ashram within the material world the whole point why you are in the material world is itself a reason of misery dukha alayam so it is a dukha alay you have to make the best out of the deal uh, of the bad deal and within that the purpose of varna ashram is to make progress in krishna consciousness while in this material world and there is a system there is a process there are teachings all that is given by our acharyas how to make the best of a bad deal that is called varna ashram so um uh, all ashrams will give misery without finding krishna yes but if we integrate like you said krishna in our ashrams in the specified ways vaidhi sadhan bhakti there is vidhi there is process given then we will make progress so those are the my best answers to the questions yes question here you talked about uh, organizing fundraising for red cross and you know, but even if you're doing direct fundraising for the temple i think the main point is that if our personal bhajan has been done then it's okay to do that yeah if side project if it's like this directly correct so fundraising. my wife is asking a question because she usually does fundraising <laughs> <laughs> 
and where did i say that uh, ugra karma mm. wait 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 yeah yeah no i found that somewhere i said because it requires dealing with people somewhere i said over here so the point i may have deleted that bullet or no, the previous side previous side yeah ugar karma is there yeah the yeah. uh, last last but second one found ugar karma but i am i am looking for something which said that yeah the main main increases protection no 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 i had put a bullet but main point is that yeah oh actually it is in prajalpa it is kind of related but any job i mean if you go and do this earning money can you come up with an activity of earning money just by yourself alone robinson crusoe you are the only person on the island and you earn money no it, in, it requires interaction with people okay so whenever we are interacting with materialistic people and typically it is about interaction with materialistic people it will impact your dilute your consciousness that is the whole point of this verse that th this is the reason these two verses are clearly saying why earning money or making money even for fundraising is not a direct personal krishna bhajan that is my understanding now as a very very advanced elevated devotee one can have that consciousness but what is being said is that generally it is not possible especially in kali yuga so go ahead and do that but all that is being said is that also maintain very strong daily personal sadhana saying that the problem becomes when one says my job is fundraising and so i don't need to do my personal bhajan that's all that is being said that is the problem okay that is the problem and then when you are doing fundraising do it with as pure consciousness as possible not with a consciousness of a race oh i have to show to gbc last year was these many thousand this year i have to have turn whatever g g a r what is called uh, whatever or something you know you have to annual rate of increase whatever you know 10% increase year over year i have to show oh all this number game everything then you deviate you think you go by you know anything goes by hook or by crook somehow i will oversell this that whatever all kind of gimmicks then you do oh you know uh, we will do put your uh, name on the brick or we will you know all kind of you know you give these many thousand dollars and we will announce your name we will give you special uh, darshan i mean all that is fine but you are making it up like a sales pitch <coughs> somebody you are you are you are you are you are diluting the main principle our krishna consciousness is not about uh, awarding upadhis so there is a fine line anything else that's my best answer can i ask a question sure uh, in current age multitasking multitasking has become like a common for many of us or all of us is it okay to combine the side projects uh, along with the personal direct bhakti bhakti like i was just going to interrupt you and say not with bhakti material activities go ahead and do multitasking the direct personal bhajan that we have been calling it as that with that term 
should not be multitasked with anything material. I was uh, an example I was thinking of is like a prasadam distribution that you know devotees do along with smaran uh, or book distribution. Oh yes. Smaran, okay. So that you can present yes. Uh, a Personal. My understanding, so prashadam distribution to other people and remembering Krishna at my understanding it would be that at the very, very high levels, at a perfected level, yes, as one is distributing prashadam, one can be completely absorbed in Krishna. But generally, I would say I cannot do it. And I would say that for me, I would and the best answer is that make up your daily schedule that this is what I count as my daily personal bhajan. You can say one hour of reading, my japa, my if you are doing deity worship at home, whatever it is. Among there are so many options. Our acharyas have given 64 options have been given. Nine options have been given. Pick up your options based on your discussion with your guru. Whatever, like Srila Prabhupada says, chant 16 rounds. So Make up your that part. Don't don't compromise on that. Keep that solid, pakka. Then beyond that, yes, uh, everything that you do, uh, always, maam anusmara yuddhacha tasmat sarveshu kaleshu. Lord Krishna says, not three hours in a day, but sarveshu kaleshu maam anusmara. Think about me and yuddhacha. Do your activities of yuddha or whatever your yuddha in your material world you have to do yes but that direct personal bhajan has to be in my understanding is dedicated don't substitute what you are asking is the other part that is definitely true but the question shouldn't add a but but does that mean i don't need to do this that is where the problem arises that's all that is being said Okay, anything else? Okay, thank you so much. So I'm sorry we could cover two aspects. Uh, we will complete this second verse next time. Four aspects, Prajalpo, Niyamagraha, Janasangha, and Laulyam. So these four we will cover next time and we will complete second verse. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna.